Ok, trata de compartir pantalla. Yes. There you go. The game. Okay, uh, good evening, Professor uh, Carlos Jimenez and Professor Robert Sabino. To me, it's an honor to be here and have the opportunity to present my thesis uh, as a final presentation. Uh, my thesis project is about uh, the translation of a book. The name of the book is, Is There a Hole in a Boat? Tra or Travel in Panama Without a Car. And the author of the book that I translate is Aaron Dufer. Okay, Darren Dufer, uh, he lived in North America, United States. Actually, he lived in New York. He is a journalist. The, the, the genre that he wrote is travel literature, and he won some awards with, the, with this book. Let's start with the summary of, the, of each chapter about my book. Okay, the chapter number one, the monarchy of the Americas. In the book, in, the, in this chapter, Duran Dufour make emphasis in a lot of the fauna and flora that Panama has. Uh, focus on the some tribes, some indigenous tribes like Cuna, Embara, and the little uh, town from the indigenous town. Chapter number two. In this chapter, the Dufer has to move to the with his girlfriend around the the Lake Panama. In this chapter, Dufer uh, talk about the all the daily routine that he uh, did in the land of uh, Las Tablas, Herrera. Of course, when the winter is and the summer is coming, I mean the the first activity that he was in the carnival, the the, the beginning of the carnival. Chapter number three: voting for garbage is prohibited. In his uh, needed to learn about the history of Panama. Focus on the Panama Canal. He was searching information on Panama Canal, all the the artificial artificial lakes that compose the the Panama Canal, and the information one the, the information that Dufour make emphasis was uh, the high amount of people that died in the beginning of the construction the, the construction of the Panama Canal. Chapter number. Four, let me move this. Sweden life once upon a one upon a, at a time. When Darren Dufer continued traveling around the, the country, he went to the Veraguas, uh, uh, Los Santos, Herrera, and he heard that in Los Santos was one of the, the best, the people made the best plan and the best bread in all the, the, the country. So he visited to this land and this land and the, the bread. And obviously the one, the, the most important uh, element of this, uh, I mean, there are for thought, that was the, the rum, the Panama rum. Chapter number five, second hand spirit. In this chapter, uh, Dufer talk about how it feel uh, when, when you are traveling in a public transport, but in, especially in the the Rojos. He he was uh, riding a Red Devil, but of course, Diablo Rojos is a Panamanian war. Uh, he was talking about the the Diablo Rojos are not the, mo the most uh, comfortable way to, to go to one place to order. And he 
one of the things that catch his attention was the pavos. Uh, the, the pavos are the, the people to are in charge to, to take the money of uh, each passenger. And there are like tools because they are uh, taking the, the money of the each of each passengers and also are talking with the with the gears and you know the rest. Chapter number six into the bourgeois buffet. In this chapter, uh, Dufer uh, was traveling in some island island, island of Bocas del Toro, and later. He was in a boat with some other uh, indigenous people, and he was scared because he was uh, looking at the helmet of the of the boat, and he was thinking, "Oh, they are holding a boat." Of course, and the other people doesn't feel any any kind of, of fear because they are those situations are not ready for them, and also he made a special kind of person. The special kind of person was a hermit, but not a normal hermit. It was a hermit chef, and his name was Polo. Polo he helped out uh, Sir Dufer with the food and uh, some uh, take him to some beach of the island. Chapter number seven, those from the Mother Earth, in this chapter, uh, Darren Dufer talking about the height of variety of the people that live in some uh, some Kunas po uh, populace, not only indigenous people, because he was focused on the people from the black community. Chapter number eight, this is a uh, dictator. The Rendorfer wants to know about the political rules or the political relationship of Panama and he found uh, the history of Noriega, who was a president from, from Panama, that was indicted by a lot of shares like uh, traffic money, rape, electoral fraud, drug trafficking, and those kind of things. This, uh, chapter number eight, talk out a lot of, of the history of Panama with the strong. Chapter number nine, the black When the uh, goes to some uh, place that in Panama live, when he arrives to Pararapuru, he wants to hunt some birds but he can do it because the in uh, there are rules in this town in, in this town you cannot hunt but the only thing that you can do it here there is fishing and of course he he was telling about he he fishing uh some big fish he was traveling with the people that live here and he met new places chapter number nine tentations okay in this chapter, Darren Dufer arrived to the core of the Panama, of the Panama. I mean the capital of Panama. Uh, Darren Dufer arrived to the central part of Panama. I mean the peatonal. He was telling that he proved a uh, raspado. He, the, the one thing of cash hit at his attention was the, all the graffitis with the uh, faces of uh, the most notorious music of Panama, uh, let's say Japanese, Danger Band, those uh, people. Chapter number 11, both friend and food. This chapter was a little bit uh, sad because he was telling about the one of the, mo the, the animals that are in ancient, I mean the iguanas. In Panama, there exist actually uh, some farms that uh, are in charge to raise iguanas to omit the danger of extinction. And he was telling that they, they, he tastes the iguanas, obviously, 
and he was telling that the iguanas need help from each other manner. Chapter 12, Bad Breath. Uh, in this case, he was telling about the one of the things that he don't feel uh, proud of Panama because in one of the Kuna house, he was telling that one of the worst night of his life was there because he was stinked by a lot of insects and was a terrible night. But at the end, he felt better when he tasted the fula. The fula is a uh, Panamanian beer, Soberana. Chapter 13, Otuno was startled. Uh, in this case, it's not that easy because he was, he went to Tonosi. After a uh, go there, he had to take a taxi to the port and later a boat to the uh, Isla Gemela. And there, he was to, he had to wait a uh, around five or six nights until watch at one egg of a turtle. Chapter 14, Ipeti. Uh, first of all, what is Ipeti? Ipeti is a, a colloquialism from that makes reference to the difference of the culture, the Kuna culture and the Emirate culture as a rivality. In this uh, chapter, Darren Lufer was telling that the one of the most uh, happy moments that the, he, he lived there was when he tasted the ceviche, the cuna ceviche, and of course, I think uh, Lufer loved the beers, I don't know, when he drinks a beer at 50 cents. Chapter uh, 16, the little goat. Dorendofer was traveling around Chiriqui, Boca del Toro, the other countries, but he never go to the Darien. In this case, when case he went to Darien and a little at the downtown, let's see, in this in this form, he went to a downtown. Its name of this downtown was Javisa. He met a lot of Javisianos and spent time with his families, with his uh, traditional customs and those kind of things. Chapter 16, Los Santos, where the bulls catch the body. Of course, uh, Los Santos was is one of the most a, one is one of the principal province of the country that every day are uh, celebrating. In this case, a uh, Darren Dufer was in a cook fight, in a bull fight, and uh, he was playing cards also. This chapter talk about those kind of uh, play that the people in Los Santos are doing almost every day. Next step, let's start with the translation techniques. First of all, there are different kinds of translation techniques. Translation techniques may vary according to what we were translating. And exist three types of translation techniques. Direct translation techniques, oblique or indirect techniques, and others. Direct techniques. Uh, they are used when we are translating something from the source text to the target text. The first example that I have here is literal translation. We have uh, two examples here. The peasant began to run from plants in the 
En Spanish, los campesinos comenzaron a regresar de plantar semillas en los campos. I translate each by each a word of this sentence using these techniques. And the second example, the source text, the abundance of the habitants like flood and token servers as the Delta sink. In Spanish, la abundancia de los árboles, árboles habitantes como perezosos y tucanes sirve como una revelador señal. And again, I translate each word by word. Okay, borrowing. Borrowing is the simplest of all translation techniques. It consists in uh, take a, a phrase of a word from one language into another language without translation. In this case, the source text is conserving all the, the beating wildlife you can shake, a machete. In Spanish, conservando toda la vida salvaje, puedes sacudir un machete. I use the same word with translation. And the second example, thanks to the repetition of the word of the graffiti, seems I easily, I easily raise the colors and the insignia of the camp. And the translation, gracias a la repetición del trabajo de los equipos de graffiti, yo reconocí fácilmente los colores y sin la gorra. And the last of direct techniques is cult. Cult is a special kind of borrowing. Uh, where you, where uh, you took a, a phrase from the source, a phrase of a word from the source into a target text. But you have to uh, borrow, it borrow a, a, a word from the source text to the target text, but you have to translate each element of it. And the example I hear, the source text was, the family was busy breaking a row of hot dogs this love from the bottom shelf. Just. In Spanish, la familia estaba preocupada partiendo una fila de panes del tamaño de perros calientes del estante inferior. And the second example is the source text Sustained as a bullying hand, and it wouldn't kill anyone either. That's it. In Spanish, una picadora de hormiga bala y tampoco mataría a nadie. Eso es. I translate each word of its element in this using these translation techniques. The next step of uh, the second part of the translation techniques are oblique techniques. These techniques are used when you cannot translate a phrase or a sentence or a text from the source text to the target text without altering the meaning or the grammatical structure. Okay. The first one was is adaptation. Adaptation occurs when something to a specific language culture is translated to a language culture. In the first example, source text, meanwhile, <clears throat> Plutarch hack in Tiger Ball size capsule, revealing his cache of silky with tight spots. <clears throat> In Spanish, mientras tanto, Plutarco pirateó una cápsula del tamaño de una pelota de fútbol, revelando che de de mancha blanca. I use I re, uh, replace the word hack by pirateo. It's uh, the the same meaning but changing the the, the words. <clears throat> and the example number two, Panama City style and spread your arms of the words like a blackjack game player. In Spanish, al estilo de la ciudad de Panama, extiende tus brazos sobre tus mercancías como un jugador de 21. I change blackjack to 21 using the translation technique adaptation. Modulation. Uh, this technique consists uh, of using a phrase that is different in the source uh, text to the target language to come the same idea. The example that I have here, I have found the writers on the tray is the source text and the target text is Había encontrado el mejor mercader. Is the, the, the same meaning used 
changing the the elements of it of is this, this uh, sentence. And the second example, search tech approaching the end of the dry season, the region was wrapping of its friends for production of sugar for the year. There was its source text and the target text. Aproximándose el inicio del invierno, la región estaba terminando su frenética producción de azúcar para el próximo año. I changed a portion of the dry season and I conveyed the same idea using the word in Spanish, aproximándose el inicio del invierno. Transposition. Okay. Transposition is moving from one grammatical category to another, uh, to another category with altering the meaning of the translation of the text. In the source text, and it apparently try, try what the father and sons do. And the target text, y comestible, parecía, pruébalo, pruébalo, incitó al dúo de padre e hijo. I changed the word apparently that as a adverb for parecía is a verb. And the second example in the source text, source text he knew probably his loader broke to a cake when I told him that I have been used about to sleep. In the target text, asintió con confianza. Su risa estalló en una carcajada cuando le dije que estaba a punto de dormir. Probably. It's an adverb, and I change the adverb into a noun. In Spanish, confianza. Okay, reformation or equivalent. Here, you have you want to express something in a completely different way. This technique is uh, useful when you are translating idioms, uh, idiomatic expression, colloquialism, or slogans. In the, exam in the first example, source text, plans to go war with a mute in front of our footwear. And in the translation uh, technique, equivalence, the target text, estaba discutiendo con todo el mundo frente al calzado. Plans to go war is an idiomatic expression and I change and I uh, convey the the message of this idiomatic expression into the translation. The second example, the source text, I stumble through the mood of the rainforest mountain. Consider how I could have failed to realize the certainty of not bringing enough water. My hair spooning at the type at the type B intensely. In the target text, tropecé con el oro de las montañas de la selva tropical al considerar cómo podría haber fallado en darme cuenta de la seriedad de no traer suficiente agua. Estaba muy preocupado. My hair was blended outside the intensely. is a, let's say, a, a, a idiom that uh, do for road in the, in the sentence. Translation in Using equivalence is estaba muy preocupado. Compensation. Uh, compensation is used when you cannot translate something, the target uh, text, from the target text to the source. Uh, to, sorry. Compensation is used when you cannot translate something to the source text to the target text. In this case, uh, when we are in my example of the source text, sometimes when wandering through the woods, it's inevitable to come face to face with a bushmaster. Bushmaster is a name of a snake, or not a name of one of the most uh, dangerous snakes in Latin America. In the target text, algunas veces cuando ambula por el bosque, es inevitable encontrarse con una first land o BYA, eh, que es otro nombre que también se conoce en Latinoamérica. The second example, the source text, he came to the bush buffet. The target text, ando hacia el gran banquete festín. The, this technique is clarified that when we are translating something, uh, 
uh, word from another language that doesn't have the right translation into the target language, you have to use sometimes parentheses to uh, define the word that is in and the translation, the other translation techniques, omission, omission refer when the editor of the text considered that some information in the sentence or the source text is not relevant. The first, the first example, source text, the fly was, would have reduced a file over, which capricious trick into a 30 minutes hook. The target La avioneta habría reducido una caminata de 5 horas en un vuelo de 30 minutos. I consider to omit the, the phrase that is in underline because this information is not much, that doesn't have the, the enough relevance to the readers. And of course, the second example, the source text, I look up from the breakfast of cremated plantain when a free ground spread uncover another surprise for my inspection and call it up maybe you see Spanish version of my name. The source uh, text was this was this and the target text Levantista cuando unos cuidadores descubrieron otra sorpresa para mi inspección y me llamaron usando la versión español de mi nombre. I omit the, the information from the breakfast of Crimet contains a explicitation explicitation is when something from one language is not a, you cannot understand easily. I mean, it's a, met, a method to clarify the target in the target what is about the source text. For example, source text nestled in a part in the Panama Canal Basin and confined Enclavado en un parque en la cuenca del canal de Panamá, científicos de Ancón. We, I have to clarify what is Ancón and the, what is about. And the second example, source text. As I approach to ground zero of the island, like to downsell written corns in the, their plaza. The target, cuando me acerqué a la zona cero de la vida nocturna de la isla, Los ritmos de danza se agitaron en plaza. And in this case, I have to explain and clarify what is dance. And finally, addition. Addition is when the editor of the text consists, uh, consider uh, that adding information is re relevant to uh, get the more get the, uh, the reader's attention and get the, the text more, uh, more, more uh, rich to read. The two examples I have here, the source text, briefly turned as a dark night, fighting only with the power of the Tsukyas. Target text, briefly, se vuelve oscuro como la noche, luchando solo con el poder de los Tsukyas. Uh, and I explain what is Tsukyas. Los suyos son los chamanes o médicos de la tribu. The second eh, example is first text, only the raspado, the flower ice bike. And the target text, the translation is solo el raspado. And I explain what is raspado. Que es una golosina panameña. La bicicleta de hielo, favor. And the next step, I have here some notes that catch my attention when we are, I was translating the, the, the book. I found some difficulties when I was translating the idiomatic phrase of, or expression if the author made reference. And in the part of the grammar, I was able to notice some faults, the grammatical structure of the text because the author was trying to transcribe some conversation that he has the nat native Panamesh or the, the native Panamesh or the in indigenous Kunas in trips, but the Spanish language. So he commits some flaws. Second.
that I have here. So the the I use some map tools, and that was like Word reference, Lingui, Grammarly, translate as a uh, Google as a translator, book ideas, and the Darren do for a uh, website is Omnis Traveler. And finally, to conclude my final presentation, I have this quote that means a lot for me and a lot to me. Be thankful for the struggle you go through. They make you stronger, wiser, and humble. Do not let them break you. Let them make. Um, thanks, Professor Carol Jimenez and Professor Robert Tabino for this time, and um, if you have any question, feel free to, to ask. I'm going to stop sharing screen. That's what I was going to ask you. Uh, well, I have no further question, given that I help you all along the, the course of your uh, thesis project, but maybe Professor Jimenez will have questions. I don't know, yeah. maybe. I got it. First, me, Fisher Robert. Uh, again. First me, the, with the questions? Yes, yes. That's okay. Good. Okay, Felipe, I love your job because I love your book, because talk about my beauty, Panama. I love my, my Panama. And second, I offer you my apologize with on, on page 39, where I give you one suggestion about the forbidden to vote for trash, remember? I suggest you to yes. use yes. B, a little V. Yes, Professor. I, 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 yes, I know, I know. You can't, you don't have to, to conclude your uh, ask because, to your question because I know what you're talking about. No, okay. I didn't it's see that. It's that a mistake, mistake from, the, from the, yes. yes. It's Sorry, a mistake from the, that, uh, that for make reference. I didn't see the preposition <laughs> for. For that reason, I, I suggest you yes. use B, the little V in the word basura. basura. Remember? The expression is yes. forbidden to vote yes, for trash. I didn't see for. For that uh, reason, I suggest you to use the letter V in the word uh, mm. basura. OK? It's OK. Mm -hmm. um, my question in this case is, what technique you apply on page on page 14 with the expression, I three frogs? Remember that expression on page 14? The expression is, I three frogs. And in the trans you translation, you use... To don't remember that phrase on page 14? No, actually, I, I don't remember here because I don't have the the, the PowerPoint, the uh, power, uh, the, the book in this PowerPoint presentation. No. But I have the... Okay, Felipe. On page 14, you use the expression I three frogs. The translation in Spanish you use es una clase de. No, perdón. ¿Por qué ojos rojos y no arborícolas o de árboles? I oh, no. Uh, yes, I, 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 I got it. I, I got it. I got it. I, I know what you mean. No, but. Uh, I actually I, I change I follow your instruction. I change the 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 ojos rojos for uh, ranas ar ar arbóreas. Uh, in Spanish, son las ranas esas las ranas dardo. This the Spanish name. And I change. I follow your instructions. Do you know the ranas? No, I never <laughs> seen one of this before. Me neither. 
but I, I know what you're talking about. Okay, so uh, the next question is related with Darren Dofor. Why Darren Dofor, like an uh, American writer, choose Panama to write about this book? Using a complicated uh, um, language, using the fauna, flora, traditions, and all of a Panama. It is because we already know the huge amount of North American citizens that uh, arrive in Panama because the live in Panama is cheaper than the United States. It's one of the, the first reasons that he came to Panama to know because it's cheaper than her countries. How many time he has spent looking for this information to write this book? How many time this is spent, uh, he has spent uh, to write this book and research about oh, okay. all this information? <laughs> He has two books about Panama. The, the first one is Air Holding a Boat, and another one is Breakfast for Alligator. He wrote uh, simultaneously around five years. The, the, my book is completely, he completely wrote in like a, in 205, one and a half around. Just traveling or living here? Just traveling, just traveling, because he doesn't live here. He came with Sirfe to know Panama and uh, meet the new, meet pla new places, as an island, a province, tradition, food, etc. Alone? No, no, with his girlfriend. Oh, okay. Because okay. he li actually lives in New York. Both? Both? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, Robert, that's all. That's all for me, Felipe. Okay. Thank you. Well, Felipe, this is uh, <clears throat> uh, question time. So uh, I'm going to send you to the waiting room so that I can uh, discuss with Professor Jimenez the grade that you're going to get. Okay. So I'm going to send you to the uh, waiting room. Give me a second. There you go. Where, uh, okay. I'll call you when we're ready. Okay, Professor Jimenez, uh, do we know each other? Because I don't remember you. Yes, you was my teacher on Otema. <laughs> I was your teacher at Otema? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember you. <laughs> You're oh, a special what, teacher. Uh, oh, thank you very much. What did I teach you? Sorry? What subject did I teach you? Um, I don't remember, but I, I'm sure, not literature. I don't not like literature, literature teacher. <laughs> For that reason, <laughs> I remember you. <laughs> okay. Oye, usted tiene los papeles que tenemos que firmar, etcétera, etcétera. No, profe. No, pero puedo no. averiguar mañana con la profesora Carmen porque yo tengo un compromiso con ella en el hospital. Y yo voy a hablar uh -huh. con ella para asegurar todo estos documento, profesor. Porque okay. hay mucho que firmar, hay mucho que firmar. Sí, entonces, ¿cómo lo íbamos a hacer así virtualmente? Pero bueno, eh, a ver, bueno, yo considero, pero esta es mi consideración, cada uno tendrá su punto de vista, que, ay, Dios mío, el pobre Felipe tuvo que trabajar su tesis eh, con mi ayuda, pero, pero virtualmente, y eso pues no es lo mismo. Entonces, eh, yo le conseguí el libro. Yo, yo, eh, yo conseguí, yo tenía la amistad con, tengo la amistad con el señor Dufour, y, y pues él fue el que me consiguió ¿De el libro. ¿De veras? Pues, sí, ajá. Wow. Esto, y él, eh, de hecho yo chateo con él, él está en mi Facebook, eh, no Felipe, bueno Felipe también, <ríe> pero me refiero al señor Dufour, y de hecho le estaba tratando de conseguir el otro, el de Alligator, Ajá. para la hermana de Felipe, Ajá. pero no sé, la hermana de Felipe creo que no va, no va, va a esperar que eso sea presencial, no sé. Es pero que bueno, creo que Ana todavía le falta, profe. Sí, ah bueno, entonces esto como, como eh, el pobre tuvo que trabajar eh, con mi ayuda, porque pues no era lo mismo, dado que estaba por la pandemia, él ha hecho un esfuerzo brutal, ayer estuvimos hasta la madrugada, 
trabajando en las vías positivas porque le dije que yo quería las vías positivas con hipervínculos, cosa que pareciera como una página web y no una vía positiva que fuera como una vía positiva tras la otra, que eso pues no, no es muy atrayente. Correcto. Entonces, eh, por esas razones y por cómo él se, man, se eh, manejó durante la presentación de la tesis, yo en lo personal diría que, porque yo recuerdo cada punto de esto que uno tiene que estar firmando y poniéndole eh, eh, ganchitos, etc. Eh, yo considero que él de verdad que hizo un trabajo espectacular. Por ende, yo le daría, eh, par, por mi parte, eh, un 100. Yo no sé si... Cuente, si... cuente con eso. Él es un excelente sí. estudiante y siempre estuvo muy anuente a, su, a sus cosas. No, tranquilo. Conmigo no hay inconveniente. Ahorita el inconveniente es ese documento que de verdad yo tuve, mi formulario lo tuve que crear porque no hubo manera de que me respondieran. Si no, Felipe no, no hubiera podido hacer correcciones. Pero bueno, aquí la idea es, es colaborarle a los estudiantes que tienen el interés de sacar su título y, y máxima en esta situación en la que estamos todos. Así que permítame hablar con la profesora Carmen Ajá. Para, para, para conseguir ese, ese formulario que tenemos que llenar usted y yo, donde casualmente pues agregamos el, 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 puntua, el puntaje de Felipe y ellos nos dirán, pues yo lo puedo escanear y lo mandamos virtual. Ok, ok. No. Yo lo me lo mande, yo lo firmo, lo escaneo, lo firmo, no, digo, claro. lo escaneo, lo firmo y lo reenvío, así claro. que por eso no hay problema. Entonces, bueno, entonces yo esperaría pues que usted hable con la profesora Carmen para ver qué le dice. Profe, déme su número, por favor, aunque usted ah, está en el problema. grupo, pero no sé con qué nombre esté. Ok, 68 ocho, nueve, nueve, cero, dos, siete, tres. Enseguida lo agrego, profesor, y mañana apenas hablo con la profesora Carmen, le digo pues que me, que me contesta ella y si no buscamos usted y yo la manera de, 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 de no sé, de buscar la manera de que nos acepten un formulario creado, no sé, para que Felipe pueda hacer su, su entrega. Ok. Cuente conmigo. Bueno, entonces, ok, muchas gracias, eh, eh, colega. Y bueno, le vamos, vamos a dar a, el... a traer a Sí. Sí, vamos a traerlo y decirle pues, que lo dice usted, que fue la lectora, eh, lo que consideramos que él sacó, pues. Bien, ya lo voy a traer nuevamente acá a la sala. Ok, perfecto. Ahí viene. Ah, ya se está uniendo. Está demorando un poco, quizás fue al baño. <risa> Felipe, ¿cómo estás? Felipe, eh, la profesora... Eh, sí, sí, La profesora... Ah, profesor Jiménez is going to give you some news. Eh, based on our decision as judges. Eh, sir, sir, can you repeat again, please? Sure. The profesor Jiménez is going to give you some news, uh, some information okay. about our decision as judges. Okay, and uh, well, I hope you like it. Okay, okay, Professor Jimenez, this is your time. Are you nervous, Felipe? Of course. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> okay, don't worry. In this occasion, you have your 100 points in your presentation, and congratulations you. because we know your job. Congratulations, you. Felipe. So you have I 100 really points from. You have 100 points from Professor Jimenez and 100 points from me. So, one uh, decision, Felipe. Just one <laughs> decision between them, with, between us, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you okay. have a, really a good job. Nice and good job, Thank Felipe. Uh, it's important in my observation on page 39. And remember that suggestion, okay? That's all. I already did all the, the, the corrections. That's all. Okay. And I don't know, teacher, maybe about the to, documents. Oh, yes. Uh, well, we don't have the document, uh, Felipe, we don't have the document that we have to sign. But uh, Professor Carol Jimenez, she has an appointment with uh, Professor Carmen, the, the Professor Carmen, of yeah. Martina, and she's going to talk okay. to her tomorrow. And then we are going to do whatever we have to do in order to get the documents, in order to give you the grade. So don't it's, worry for that. Yes, is it necessary? No, I but, yes, I will wait. I wait through long months, so I can wait some days. Or... 
Okay. Felipe, yes. and don't worry, if the teacher can man, let, let us create an, uh, one document for that reason, we create it, okay? Yeah. Thank you. I will wait patiently. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you. Th well, this is it. Thank and you thank you very much, Professor Carlos Jimenez, and thank you, uh, Felipe, for your time here. And well, I'll see you working at the Latinas uh, in the near future as our colleague. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Okay. Bye. 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 See you. See you. Have a nice okay. day. Bye. See you. Okay. Teacher, I call you tomorrow, okay? Yeah, I'll be waiting for your call. Okay, okay. bye. Bye, Felipe. Oh, bye. Ciao.